Let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Theology, Hypocrisy, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting Gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba, Olumba Obu, the Supernatural Teacher. First Lesson, St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Second lesson, St. Luke chapter 6 verse 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Golden text, St. John chapter 14 verse 21. He that ought my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself in him. Quote, Those who chase the shadows. It is excellent to be called a child of God. How about what it takes? You have read the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as outlined above. You will notice from your readings that disobedience is not a new arrangement. Furthermore, you may grasp fast what it takes to qualify you as a child of God. Take note also that the intrigue of the flesh is not new. The shouting of Jesus endlessly and frivolously is one of such carnal expressions and hypocrisy which does not start from now. If the mere expression of that great name of our Lord Jesus Christ is not a pretense? Why do you indulge in terrible and unwholesome acts? You hate and even destroy many. How can we reconcile this double back? On one hand, you are a master in fornication, idolatry, and gossips. On the other hand, you are proclaiming profoundly and rebuking sternly with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh man, my heart bleeds for you. It bleeds the more because in the midst of ignorance, you claim wisdom power and righteousness where do you think you could go to to acquire the knowledge of god who told you that there is a bible college and where is it our lord jesus christ said neither be ye called masters for one is your master even christ then Matthew chapter 23 verse 10. Somebody would claim to have graduated out of the university and that he read religious studies, but he still drinks, steals, fornicates, worship idols, and indulges in all manner of immoralities. If I may ask, what were you taught in the university? If your course content is devoid of how to transform yourself and man, then what is the difference between you and the heathens? 
what have you to show as a major in theology? Churches have sprung up with different names. The truth is that whether you establish numerous churches or not, you must practice the injunctions of God. Otherwise, you have earmarked your person for condemnation. This had been lucidly explained in the passage of the scripture. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Why these hues and cries? The teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ are so direct and is and it's that its comprehension, interpretation and implementation are supposedly not cumbersome. I liken the same to a teacher who sets a test on one hand and provide the answers with the other. The test being the ultimate aim of every man, which is eternal life with God. The answer he has simply provided by urging all and sundry to practice the injunctions of God. So why launch all these campaign of calumny against the leader of others? What are all these churches meant? Of what use are all these empty boasts about strength of the churches or fellowships? bank balances of individual preachers and churches. Let it be known to you that if you had sponsored the building of all the churches and personally call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ a million times a day, it profits you nothing except you accept and implement the directives of our Lord Jesus Christ to the letter. If you wish, go around all the streets with a megaphone and a lorry load of Bibles. Preach day and night unceasingly. If you do not practice these words, it's of no gain to you. It is indeed awful to see the whole world, black and white, young and old, deceiving themselves and thinking that they are deceiving God. In the past, those that gave themselves up for the services of God were few. Hence, they called him the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. But now, everybody claims to be his servant. The thieves, fornicators, idolaters, necromancers, murderers, and so forth are all inclusive. Everybody now shouts at the top of his voice, Jesus, 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 day and night. What a colossal waste of energy. What a deceit. However, he had taken personal note of this when he was quoted as saying, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? said Luke chapter 6 verse 46. He knows too well that right from the foundation of the world was laid, nobody has ever practiced the word of God. Most of us believe that God has no eyes, ears, or conscience. Who told you so? 
He has all the organs and capabilities irrespective of his meekness, patience and tolerance. So brethren, stop deceiving yourself. God cannot be mocked. He sees and notes all your activities. Read his scriptural expressions. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. The placard carrying disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, the praise singers, the religious fanatics, the sticker sellers, boyers and users, the numerous university graduates who merely pay lip services to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ are laboring in vain. The way to salvation is short, that is, practice the injunctions of God. The second chance, our Lord Jesus Christ did his utmost best. He loves man, he cherishes him. His recalcitrance notwithstanding, consequently, before his ascension, he made yet another promise. He created a second chance for man. He urged man to utilize the expected opportunity effectively in order to obtain salvation. That promise was effectively recorded in the scripture. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. St. John chapter 14 verse 16. The emergence of the Comforter was obvious because he would have enough time to teach and lead men to the accurate knowledge of truth. Salvation then will be easy. Yet, how many are prepared to receive this Comforter? Who believes in him? It is a generally acceptable fact that flesh and blood cannot practice the injunctions of God. Hence, we require the Comforter to see us through, the Holy Spirit to keep the zeal in us functioning and stem out our interests from inordinate acts. Who on earth is prepared to do this? The situation has remained the same since the fall of Adam. The Queen Mother who gave birth to this male child shared in this aspiration. Shared in his aspiration. She urged all true her child to turn a new leaf. She is here to bless you tremendously. You worship idols and mermaids, build shrines here and there at the foot of trees, mountain tops, at the riverside, inside the room, forests, and so forth. But no one has ever put the word of God in practice. What do you expect? This gospel is not addressed to the Christians alone. It is universal. Let the Jews repent. Let the entire world repent. That the anger of God may not be rekindled. Or else it shall be worse for this generation. But when he shall hear of wars and commotions. Be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. 
and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and unto prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed by both by parents and brethren, and king's folks, and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience, possess your soul. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the, desolation, that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into st luke chapter 21 verses 9 to 21. the excerpt above is a clear evidence of the signs of the times the tribulation and rapture Take this as a last warning and turn a new leaf that your second chance may be properly utilized. This is a simple and straightforward appeal. He speaks no more in parables. The mere belief in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will not save you because one question still stands unanswered. Have you practiced his teachings? Parading in long white apparels will not save you. In the previous generation, many had worn garments, sang beautiful songs, played drums, and danced dexterously. But this did not fetch them the kingdom. The repentance is the prerequisite for this kingdom. Hence, our Redeemer rightly said, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. St. Luke chapter 13 verse 5. He further, he further added, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. This gospel clearly points out the fact that our salvation is in our practicing the word of God. Do not deceive yourself by claiming to be Jesus, Jehovah, our Lord. All these and many more will not save you. Do have it in mind that there is no other approach to salvation except you keep the instructions of God. My teachings and injunctions constitute the heavenly bread. Whoever eats of it will live forever. My teachings are true. They constitute wealth, peace and power. I exhort you to put same into practice. Do not be deceived by the mere assertion that your father is a bishop or your mother is a deaconess or that you have built a church and so forth all these and many more claims will not give you salvation he had said that the comforter will come and now truly the comforter has come our queen mother is hailed today because the man-child passed through her. 
He also promised that He would lead us to the perfect knowledge of truth. This He has done. He said, uh, he said that He would not speak of Himself. Have you not realized that He does not speak of Himself? See reference below. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. St. John chapter 16, verse 7. He has revealed to us through the three texts that except we practice the word of God, we shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Go through this gospel thoroughly and practice same. I have briefed you in honesty and in love. If after all these exposure you refuse to hearken and keep his instruction, you shall have yourself to blame, and the labor of the Queen Mother shall be in vain. I exhort you to examine, to re examine these things. He teaches and demonstrates righteousness seven days a week, four weeks a month, and twelve months a year. Ponder over this self-exertion. What shall be your excuse on the day of on the judgment day? I urge you to turn a new leaf. All the churches built around the world today are empty and vain. All the big names, founders, bishops, cardinals, etc., tantamount to nothing. I came before you. I started it all. Will not fetch you salvation. You build a church, but cannot practice the word of God. The preacher preaches the word of God, but he does not practice it. Salvation shall, it, shall elude you. The question now is, what stops you from practicing the word of God? Men of yesteryears failed to practice the word of God and perished. Do you think you will be spared? God has appointed our Lord Jesus Christ as his mouthpiece and source of salvation, power, wisdom, light, truth, and love. And as many that would hear and practice his words will be saved. First and foremost, it's an offense for one to put aside our Lord Jesus Christ and employ another teacher to teach him. You have committed a grievous offense by putting aside the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Any leader that does not lead in line with the teachings of Christ has neither Christ or God the Father. But any leader who leads by examples of our Lord Jesus Christ as both the Father and the Son. Do not have anything in common with anybody that imbibes teachings other than that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not eat with him or allow him to enter into your house. For if you admit him or allow him to enter your house, it implies that you are encouraging him to sin. Finally, I exhort you, sin not that, you're, that you might be saved. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.